This lesson is on implicit differentiation. It is deriving implicit functions. First, we're going to talk about the difference between an implicit function and an explicit function, or an implicit equation and an explicit equation. Some functions are written in the form where it doesn't say y equals, where it's not uh, f of x or y equals strictly defined in terms of x. So you have 4x minus 5, y equals 60. x squared, y equals 28. Or 4x squared, y plus 9y equals x cubed plus 5x. Three functions where there's x's and y's on one side of the equal sign. For many functions, you can simply define them explicitly. y equals something explicitly in terms of x. Over here, you set it equal to y. You get y equals 4 fifths x minus 12. We know how to derive this. Just use the power rule and the sum and difference rule. y equals 28 over x squared. Divide both sides by x squared. We get y equals 28 over x squared. You know how to derive that. You can either write this as a negative power or use the quotient rule, but you can still find the derivative here. Down here, we factor out a y from each side. So you get 4x squared plus 9. Quantity times y equals this. Divide both sides, so you get y equals x cubed plus 5x all over 4x squared plus 9. So you can take each of these implicit equations and turn them into an explicit equation. If it's easy to turn the equation or the function into an explicit form, then that's how I would recommend doing that and then finding the derivative. Many functions, however, either are not easy or are just not possible to set equal to y. So we have to learn what's called implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation may look new as we go through some of these examples, but it's nothing different than the chain rule. Implicit differentiation is exactly the same as a chain rule with a little bit different notation. For example, if I ask you to derive 3x squared plus 7x minus 1, quantity to the fifth. You would use the chain rule. You have an outside function and an inside function. You have your outside function, something to the fifth, then you have your inside function. So you use your chain rule, derivative of the outside times derivative of the inside function. So you would take 5 times this function to the fourth. Now you've derived your outside function. At the end, multiply it by the derivative of what's inside, 6x plus 7. Well, the chain rule is no different. If we are deriving with respect to x, something with a y in it, or with a different variable in it. If you're deriving with respect to x, or you're deriving with respect to some variable, and you have to derive a term, or terms, with a different variable in them. Well, you're going to treat that just like an, uh, another function, a separate function, that you're going to multiply by the derivative of at the end. So if I had the derivative with respect to x of y to the fifth power, I would derive the outside function, something to the fifth. First, so it's 5, that same y, to the fourth power. Then at the end, just like you did up here, I'm going to multiply by the derivative of what's inside. In this case, it's just a y. We don't know what it is, so you're going to just multiply that by dy dx, the derivative of that with respect to x. Or, notation-wise, no different, derive it 5y to the fourth and multiply it by y prime, similar to what you did with the chain rule if you used u substitution. Either one of these notations is OK or is correct. Some people like to use this a little more because uh, they won't confuse. Sometimes you can confuse your y's if you only have a little prime mark there. Um, but either one of these is acceptable. If you're going to use the y prime notation, make sure the prime is clear. So now we're going to derive an expression with both an x and a y term in it with respect to x. The derivative of this function, or of this expression, with respect to x. You notice you have 3x squared times y, so you're going to have to use the product rule. So again, this rule goes along with all the other rules. To use the product rule for this expression, we're going to do first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. When you use this product rule, you're going to use 3x squared as your first term, y as your second term. Remember, we're deriving with respect to x. So the derivative with respect to x is 3x squared y. This left side 
is using the dy dx notation. The right side is using y prime. So these are both the same, just using the two different notations. Again, it does not matter which one you choose. So we do first 3x squared times the derivative of the second times y prime or dy dx. The derivative of y is just 1, so it's 3x squared times dy dx. Plus second, which is y, times the derivative of the first, which is 6x. When you're multiplying by second, when you're using the product rule or the quotient rule, when you're multiplying by second, or by first, or by low, or by high, and it's a y term, it's important if it's just the low or the high or the first or the second, it's not being multiplied by dy dx. It's only when you're deriving a y term that you throw the dy dx in there. So when it's first times the derivative of the second, well, the derivative of the second needs a dy dx, but second times the derivative of the first, when it's just the second, it's just the y, since it's not being derived, it stays exactly as it is with no dy dx. Then you just clean this up a little bit, 3x squared dy dx plus 6xy, just for notation purposes. Again, over here, the same exact thing with y primes. Now we're going to get into some more practical uses for this. We have an equation here. y cubed plus y squared minus 5y minus x squared equals negative 4. Clearly there is no way to set this, or at least no easy way, to set this equal to y. Back a slide, we could have set this equal to y. We could have divided both sides by 3x squared if this was an equation. But here, we're not going to solve this to make it say y equals. So we're going to have to use implicit differentiation. Now, this equation right here, when graphed, gives us this function. Actually, I rephrase, not a function. Gives us this graph. You see it fails the vertical line test, so it's not a function. But it gives you this kind of looking like a little vase or a container of some kind. The implicit differentiation allows us to find the slope of the tangent line to this graph at any point. Because it's not a function, x values can give you more than one y. So the slope of the tangent line, the derivative here, isn't going to just be determined by the x value. You can see if x equals 2, you're up here a little under 2 at 0 and a little less than negative 3. So implicit differentiation is going to give us a derivative that depends on y and as well as x. We need x's and y's to find our slope of our tangent line because the point is not just dependent on x. So in order to derive this, we're going to start by deriving each term with respect to x. Doing the y cubed is 3y squared. I derive the y term, so I need a dy dx plus 2y, dy dx, you derive a y term. Minus 5 is with a y, minus 5 dy dx. Minus 2x, just a 2x, because that's just an x term. When deriving with respect to x, and the x term just goes as normal. Equals, I also have to derive the other side. Common mistake is to leave this constant over here. The derivative of a constant is 0. So I have 3y squared dy dx plus 2y dy dx minus 5 dy dx minus 2x is equal to 0. The original problem says find dy dx. So this is my derivative, or this is my equation derived. Now I want to find dy dx. I want to solve for dy dx. Get an expression that gives me the derivative. So now if I want dy dx, I want to get all the dy dx terms on the same side by themselves. All the terms with a dy dx, you see these three, stay on one side. All the terms without a dy dx go to the other side. So I take my negative 2x, bring it to the other side, it becomes a positive 2x. So I'm left with these three terms equal 2x. A goal, you're always looking back to your goal to know what you want to do. You want dy dx, so I've got to get these dy dx's out of there. So I'm going to factor out a dy dx from each term. That's why I separated sides, so that every term on one side has a dy dx. You factor it out, you left 3y squared plus 2y minus 5, quantity times dy dx is still equal to that 2x on the right. And then you divide both sides, 
solve for dy dx by dividing by this whole expression. So the derivative of this equation at any point is given by this expression. So if you want to find the slope of a tangent line at a point, go back to the graph here. You can see the point 2, 0 is on this graph. You can see if you drew a little tangent line in here, it's got a negative slope somewhere around negative 1. Looks a little bit less than negative 1. So I come back here and take the point 2, 0 and plug it in. Remember, x equals 2 has three values on that graph, so I need that y equals 0 to find the slope at that exact point. Plug in 2 on the top, you get 4. Plug in 0 for y, 0 plus 0 minus 5 is negative 5. So your overall slope at that point is negative 4 fifths, or negative 0.8, which is what we said. A little bit less than negative 1, so that's the slope of the tangent line at that point. And you can find that anywhere. If you look at the point 1, 1, it looks like we have a vertical tangent line here. So it's either going to be a really, really high slope or an undefined slope, depending on how exact that point is. So we plug in 1 for x, you get 2 on the top. Plug in 1 for y, 3 plus 2 minus 5 gives you 0. It is an undefined slope. So this formula gives us an equation to find the slope of the graph at any point x and y. The slope of the graph is determined by the x and the y value. When finding dy dx using implicit differentiation, these are always the steps. Derive with respect to x, get all the dy dx terms on one side, factor it out, solve for dy dx. Look at deriving a trig function with implicit differentiation. The original function or equation is x equals cosine of y. Find dy dx. So again, you're going to derive with respect to x. Derive both sides of the equal sign. Derivative of x is 1 equals derivative of cosine of y. Well, the derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of something. So negative sine of y times the derivative of that angle, whatever that angle was. Well, it's just a y, so we don't know exactly what it is. We'll just call it dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, whatever that ends up being. Now, we have our dy dx terms on one side, all our other terms on the other side. So we want to solve for dy dx. Divide both sides by negative sine of y. You get 1 over negative sine of y equals dy dx. And that's just negative cosecant of y. So to find the value of the slope of the tangent line to this curve at any point, you plug it into this derivative, you get negative cosecant of y. Last one here, finding a second derivative. This is a common type of question that you'll see on uh, multiple choice or uh, tests, especially if it's specific to implicit differentiation. This is a, a textbook favorite, so to speak. They give you an equation of a circle here. You remember from your algebra 2 or your pre-calculus topics on conics, x squared plus y squared equals a number is the equation for a circle centered at the origin. In this case, the radius would be 10. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. They want the second derivative. So we know this is going to be a circle, not a function. And you know every x point is going to have a y point. It's going to have two y points, or y coordinates, that go with it. So the derivative is going to depend not only on x, but on y, what point you're at. Find the second derivative, your notation for second derivative. Well, you're going to start by finding the first derivative, as always, derived with respect to x. 2x plus 2y times dy dx. Anytime you derive a y term, you multiply by dy dx. Equals, you've got to derive the other side, 2. Derivative of a constant is going to be 0. From here, it's relatively simple to solve for dy dx. Bring the 2x to the other side. It comes over as a negative 2x. Divide both sides by 2y. You get negative 2x over 2y. 2's cancel. So the first derivative, 
the slope of the tangent line at any point here is negative x over y. But they don't want the first derivative, they want the second derivative. So just like any other second derivative you would find, you just keep going, derive again. First derivative is here, negative x over y. So you want to take the second derivative. So you just derive this. Again, it's an implicit function. Negative x over y, x and y, and it's a quotient, so we're going to have to use the quotient rule. Low d high. y times the derivative of the top. Remember, if it's just the low, if y is just the low, we don't multiply by dy dx. So y times negative 1, the root of negative x, minus high d low, minus negative x times the root of the bottom. The root of y is just dy dx. So you get negative y minus negative, so plus x dy dx, all over low squared, so all over y squared. Negative y plus x dy dx over y squared. Now here's where it gets a little bit creative. dy dx, that doesn't help us simplify this. But we know dy dx is negative x over y. We already solved that. This equation hasn't changed. What we're working with from the beginning hasn't changed. So all the points that are on this equation are still the same, and dy dx is still the same. The slope of the tangent line, the first derivative, is still the same. So this is negative y plus x times the derivative of the function. Well, the derivative of the function is negative x over y, so we can rewrite that as negative y plus x times negative x over y, all over y squared. So you substitute the derivative you found back here in for dy dx over here. So now we have an expression with all x's and y's. Now we can use algebra to simplify this as best we can. I have a fraction in the numerator and I got a denominator, so I want to clean this up. I want to get one big fraction in the numerator. So this is going to be a negative x squared over y, so I need this term to be over y also. So to get negative y as an expression over y, I'm going to multiply this by y over y. So this becomes negative y squared over y plus negative x squared over y all over y squared. So I multiply this by y over y, so they both had the same denominator. Now I'm going to clean this up even more. Negative y squared plus negative x squared. I'm going to factor out a negative 1 and make this x squared plus y squared both positive. Whole thing still over y. Whole thing still over y squared. This again gets a little bit creative here. Remember we said this is all going back to the original circle equation. So all the points are still the same, the derivative is still the same, it's still all about, all this information is about the same gray. So x squared plus y squared was in our original equation, since it's still talking about that, x squared plus y squared is still going to give me the same value. So instead of having x squared plus y squared, you can substitute in a value which was 100. So now instead of having x's and y's and squares, I can replace that with a value that it always equals, because that's the equation we're solving. So I have negative 100 over y, all over y squared. And then dividing by y squared is the same as multiplying by 1 over y squared. So negative 100 times, or negative 100 over y times 1 over y squared gives us negative 100 over y cubed. Pretty involved process, a lot of algebra, a, a couple little tricks, substituting dy dx. Substituting the value of the function or the equation in there. But overall, our second derivative is pretty simple <clears throat> negative 100 over y cubed. Implicit differentiation is the same as the chain rule. And it's still, again, like all the other rules product, quotient, chain rule, it still is just giving you the slope of the tangent line at a specific point. But a lot of times with implicit differentiation, the slope of the tangent line depends on both the x and the y variable because the graph isn't a function and there's a couple different values for each x.